From 2 News, this is All That Jazz. Brought to you by R.C. Willie. Good evening. Welcome into Talking Jazz. Look who is here, jazz reporter extraordinaire. Christian Kenny, your first appearance. Ah, oh, it's been too of long. This season. Too it long. has since the last week. And you were, let's see, 24 hours ago, it was 70 degrees and you were in Phoenix. Now it's about 20 it in, degrees. I don't want to rub it in, but it definitely was really nice in Phoenix. You can feel it degrees. now, can't you? Yeah, when you yeah get I back. can feel it. But look, I'm a skier like yeah, you Yeah, that's are, right. So we both excited. are. Yep. Yeah, good for you. Can't wait till we get a lot of don't snow. Don't mind here. a little snow. Yeah, that's good. All right, we got lots of fun stuff to talk about. You and I traded some texts last night late mm -hmm. when you were about to get on the charter. What time did you get back? Like 3 a.m.? I got back at, not too bad. It was at 2 2 Two ish. Two? Okay. Well, that's yeah. not so bad. Not so bad. The but, other night was like 3 30. Yeah, then it was even later. Yeah. But we got lots to talk about here. I, I tell you, the first thing everybody is just raving about is Boyan Bogdanovich. Oh, that yeah. did he, what a great addition that has been. He hurts his ankle in that first game, comes back later. I mean, it's just amazing. Chris, he's averaging 23 points a game, hitting his field goals and his three pointers. Tell us about what this guy is bringing to the Jazz. Well, what can't this guy do, Dave? I mean, this guy can do pretty much everything. We know him as a three point shooter, but what's really stood out is all the versatility that he brings. So he can slash and crash. Um, we've seen him defensively with a block shot last night. So this guy just is on fire. And a lot of the players, after talking to them about that game, when he came in after that ankle sprain. Oh, yeah, which was he, amazing. It was amazing. He told yeah. me, he said, you know, I was tired of watching it, <laughs> watching that game. In, in the LA. locker room. And the Lakers yeah, game yeah, killed yeah, him yeah. for watching it on TV. So um, he came in, he was so tough. He said, I just didn't want to miss that game in Sacramento. Then last night lifts the team up as well. And his teammates just said they really feed off of him. He's, it's so contagious to have a guy like that. But you can see just his versatility, what he brings to the floor, whether it's that three-point shot that he makes it look so good. Smooth. And I love the, we, we call it now the bogey boogie. So when the he hit boogie. that. That three when he was on a roll get that sack well when we were playing Sacramento yeah, at home yeah, yeah. and you saw him like shuffle back. That's the bogey boogie. We're gonna call okay. it the bogey. Where's the boogie. hashtag on that? I well we're trying yes. to get it going here. I like we're that. Yeah. Okay. But gosh, we got a good guy yeah. right there. He is something else. He's awesome. All right, now that transitions to your next topic because the addition of Bogdanovich, and, and we'll get to Royce on in a moment, has created a situation where Ingles is now a six man. Is he embracing that the, the way that you anticipated I, he would? Or? You know, Joe Ingles, we've always known him as Mr. Unselfish. Yeah, he really sure. embraces that. He embraced it. Last year, you heard when he said, hey, coach, if you need me to come off the bench Whatever for a better be. matchup lineup, hey, I'm your guy. So it, he's really embraced this role. He told me and everybody that he doesn't care. Um, it's not about himself, it's about the team, really. So whether he's needed as a ball handler, which we've seen him bring the ball up before, whether he's needed as that three-point guy, whether he's needed as the sixth man, um, that energy guy, he doesn't care. It's all great for him. It's the team first mentality. So he's totally embraced it. And Joe Ingles, you know, slow mojo. Yeah, we need to get that Bojo thing going. Too, we should, we should, yeah. So, so he, so that that makes keeps him in play for six man of the year awards, by the way, which, it, which would be cool. It, that would be yeah. cool. That would be awesome. All yeah. right, so that takes us to our next topic, and another guy who, he's just kind of there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't even know how I know to, where to you're describe going with this, this. But he, but every now and again, you're just like, whoa, did Royce O'Neal just do that? He's really found himself a home here. I mean, I'm not, you know, he's been here a couple of years, obviously, but. An integral part of this team. Does that surprise you? Yeah, at three all? years. Uh, Royce O'Neal is one of my favorites. Yeah. I love his story. I love where he came from, his background. I love his mom, by the way. His mom, oh, yeah. Miss Deb. She's like, he Ms. always Deb. says, Miss Deb is more famous than I am, my mom. Um, but <laughs> just his story of being told that he wouldn't make it to the next level. He goes overseas and he comes here with the Jazz. He works his way into the starting lineup this year. Um, and it's, for, we know him for his defense. I mean, yeah. that's the thing that with Coach Quinn Snyder's system, hey, if you're locked in defensively, you're gonna get that playing time. We've seen his defense on James Harden. He's frustrating guys out there. But what he's done this year is he's taken his, his game to the next level. And I've talked to Lamar Skeeter, who's been his position coach um, for the three years here, and he really said the consistency is what has allowed him to take his game to the next level. We know what we're gonna get when this guy's on the floor. He's very consistent day in and day out. So um, that's contributed to his confidence and he embraces that role. Yeah. He knows his role, he stars in, in his role. He says, I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. Yeah. I'm that guy who's going to bring the defense, um, hit the threes, and crash the boards. Yeah. And I think you hit it when you said his role because he doesn't mm -hmm. ever seem to go outside of what he no. is supposed to be. Doing. Yeah, that's so he knows his role and he him. stars in his yeah. role. Speaking of starring, you know, Donovan Mitchell, I. 
I certainly wouldn't say he had a subpar sophomore season. Mm -hmm. It was just fine. But he, and just, we're only a few games in, he appears to have taken his game to uh, the next level. He practically willed the Jazz to win in that opener against OKC. Right. Donovan Mitchell, that's been his goal this year, is to be that next level, play at that next level. We saw it at FIBA this summer, all the things that he's adding oh, yeah, to his yeah. game and what he's doing. But, you know, for him, when I've talked to him, Defense has been a big emphasis. Um, we always go back to defense because it's Coach Quinn Schneider's system. Right, defense that. first. Um, and it's been really impressive what he's done on the defensive end. Coach Quinn Snyder did acknowledge that that part of his game has been really impressive and helpful uh, to take on that responsibility this year. But also being more aggressive, uh, going going to the rack, and then you know, attack mode, attack mode, getting to the free throw line. We saw last night those clutch free throws yeah. for him uh, and that well, the was just one big one yeah. the one big yeah. one exactly yeah. and you know at the end there how fitting is that that the game was uh one at the line right with him <laughs> yeah, yeah right with him but that's something he said that's been a big emphasis is really just attack mode and coach gave him the go ahead just attack yeah. just go go for it so he attacked Devin Booker and it worked out in his favor I also think a big thing for his game this year is patience and he's mentioned that to me numerous times. So you'll see maybe, I guess it was the Mitchell has, has told Mitchell, you yeah, about he needs to be he, patient. He's been oh, really cool. working on his patience. So uh, against Sacramento, we saw that where I think he didn't have a field goal in the, in the first quarter. In the first yeah. quarter. But yet he was so patient and he ended the night on a stellar yeah, performance. Huge, yeah. huge night for him. So that's another part of his game that he's taken to the next level. It's going to be exciting to see him. All-star for sure, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The insider stuff you get from these guys just is amazing. That's what we love about having you in the show. All right, and that takes us, by the way, seamlessly to our next topic. Are you ready for a jazz high note? High note! Let's do it. Talking jazz high notes, presented by Kimball Roofing and Repairs. Well, Rudy, wow. I mean, what a game, just back and forth, so many lead changes. Let's talk about your defense, because you really had to rely on that tonight. How would you describe your defensive effort? Uh, I think we did a great job. Besides the third quarter, you know, the, I think we fouled too much in the third, and uh, and then we refocused in the fourth, and we we're about to get some some key stops. What did you learn about your group in moments like this? You're on the road, so many lead changes. What stands out most? Just don't give up, you know. And uh, you never know in basketball. You got to keep keep pushing, keep pushing, and uh, we're gonna have an opportunity to win this game, and we we did at the end. Okay, I love that. First of all, the, we'll get to the defense in a moment, but. That's good. that's tougher. That's a lot of work for you to. That's what an arm exercise. Like four feet taller than you. I forgot my ladder. You saw me at pregame oh, yeah, with the ladder. Oh yeah, you normally have a little ladder. Or preseason with the yeah yeah, yeah he busted yeah. out the ladder for me to be able to reach him. Yeah, I forgot my ladder yesterday. Well, you need but to put that on the Need to get that back. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, it's kind of funny looking how short yeah, I am compared to that him. That is, but he's, he's so huge. I mean, he's, yeah, he's, he's tall huge. next to me. Yeah. Uh, but let's get into the defense because it it. it I mean, I dare say, Kristen, basically defense won that game for them last night. A hundred percent defense yeah. won the game. And what's really, I guess, ironic in this is, is before the game, I talked to Rudy specifically about the challenge in getting guys to buy in and take pride like he does in uh, the defense philosophy, defensive philosophy of the Jazz. Right. How do you do that? You know, and how do you do it well? Well, the guys that we have um, on our team now really embrace that. Uh, defense first mentality. You see it with Ed Davis. Uh, Mike Conley comes yeah. from the, the grit and grind of the right. of Memphis Grizzlies defense. Yeah. So defense is is comes first under Coach Quinn Snyder's system. And Rudy said it starts with Coach Quinn Snyder and then myself. No, I'm the anchor. He's the anchor. I'm yeah. the anchor. So they preach it. They take pride in it. They care about it. And you see it really paying off. The def huge defensive stops. Yeah, look at that. Right there, we're watching that with Donovan at the other end. I mean, that's just a momentum shifter. So when our offense isn't clicking, you really, really have to rely on the defense to get those stops, which sealed the deal last night for the Utah Jazz. I love the Vivint spot, by the way, where they're they're in Donovan's home, and he's talking about you're not the only one that can be defensive <laughs> player. And Rudy gets mad and swats the right. couple water. Hey, off Donovan the counter. had that huge LeBron. Remember when he came yeah, up on LeBron right. with the block? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so, great. That I was mean, awesome. They, they all adopt that. Yeah. You talked about Quinn, and you wanted to talk a little bit about this, by the way. His his various philosophies mm -hmm. is a big reason why a lot of these players are even in Utah mm -hmm. 
Tell me a little bit about that and what you, what you, your conversations you had with Moody A, I know, and Green I've and had the conversations with right. all of our new guys about Coach Quinn Snyder and especially the huge news of the extension and yeah, everybody yeah. from, you know, Rudy to Donovan and Joe to all of our new guys said that this is absolutely incredible. Uh, Emmanuel Moody A is somebody who told me I came here to this, to this program because of Coach Q what I can right. learn from Coach Q. I want to take my game to that next level. So this is a, that's a huge reason. So he could have gone, he had other options. He had other options, um, but this is where he believes that it is best fit for him. And, you know, Jeff Green. Jeff Green is a guy who's Mr. Versatility. He's played pretty much one to five at so many different programs. So for him, he loves Coach Quinn Snyder's positionless system where you can have multiple guys bring the ball up the floor. So this is a perfect fit for him too. Ed Davis just spoke to yeah, him last that? night. Okay, what did he tell And he goes, look, uh, there's teams that I've been a part of that offense is always the focus, the offense, the offense. But here, defense first for me, I'm a rebound guy. I'm all about, you know, dominating the boards. Coach Q, like, perfect fit. So it really is across the whole team. Mike Conley, Mike Conley. Yeah, what about that? He's yeah, he, well, Coach Quinn Snyder, again, it's a, it's a huge reason for him coming here. And he even said the conversations with Coach Quinn Snyder this summer on the phone, just those phone calls, the relationships. And what I thought was really interesting is, is th this is a guy who's 13 year vet, right? He said coming to this program, he feels like it's year one and two because he's learning a whole new system. And coach right. will sit him down and say, okay, here's four, five, six options when Conley before was thinking of just one or two right. or three options. So he's still learning so much, so much, so much more for him to learn from Coach Quinn Snyder. Common thread. Well, you know, with all the positives you talked about, there always has to be a couple of concerns. One mm -hmm. of them is Conley, by the way. We'll get to that in a moment. The other, though, is turnovers, Kristen. Turnovers, they, they dodged yes. the bullet yesterday. They've had, I, I want to say, over 20 turnovers in three games. The OKC game, they only had uh, 11. That's an issue. Well, and how impressive is it that all the turnovers that we started to see in that second quarter, we still battled back and had it closed on the run, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was um, bad. That second, <laughs> quarter. <laughs> second quarter turnovers got to tighten it up. You know, I think this is just a product of new guys playing together, okay. trying to feel each other out. Um, I think it's just going to take time to gel. We saw against Sacramento here at home how when we're moving the ball around the perimeter and the blender, as uh, Coach Q calls it, uh, that's what that's jazz what calls ball it, is, the is about. Yeah. The blender. Yeah, you're moving that ball yeah. around the perimeter. You're breaking the paint. Um, you're breaking down defenses. If we can get back into that and find that rhythm on offense, that's what the jazz, how the jazz want to play, and they have the tools to do it. But you're thinking of, you know, there's new guys. You're integrating into the mix here. And also keep in mind that they're playing with a big like Rudy Gobert, who maybe they haven't played with before. Yeah, totally there are many different. that have. There's yeah. not yeah. many guys like Rudy yeah. Gobert, You're who right. can roll the way Rudy rolls. But also he needs that pass in a certain area, a certain place. So it's just getting used to where Rudy is, where guys like their shots, and reading each other. So it's just going to take time. Same thing maybe for Conley. Because let's talk a little bit about that, because his shooting right now, 15% from three-point range. He's around 20 just general field goals and he's a career 40 percent right. shooter 45 percent shooter what are your concerns with him yeah i don't really have any concerns honestly with him i just you, you talked to him and he's very honest he's frustrated feels like yeah. he's in quicksand it, again it's we talked about this before he's learning a whole new system he's been with the memphis grizzlies for his entire Forever. 12 years yeah. now starting in this whole new positionless system where he has a big like rudy gobert versus like a pick and pop like he had with gasol so yeah. rudy gobert is a guy whole that's different kind totally of different he's, he's yeah, gonna okay. roll to the rim getting used to that getting adjusted to that and i mean this is a he's challenging in a whole new way but what I find really fascinating is being up close and personal watching his reactions um, during timeouts is he's just kind of looking at himself like kind of laughing like he I'll knows it's gonna this. come yeah. I'll get through it you saw the foul trouble yeah. he was in yesterday it's just part of the process and what's really cool is coach Quinn Snyder is telling him to embrace the uncomfortable because he certainly oh. is in an uncomfortable position to find, so. yeah to find <laughs> the diamond in that rough. yeah the diamond yeah. in that rough but yeah he'll it, it'll start but you know in. what a good guy he seems oh he's a great this, addition yeah. it's they're gonna get it rocking and rolling again this is a whole new system so Jazz fans, don't panic yet. Don't panic yet. Mike Conley. Okay. And none of the team teammates, none of his teammates are worried about it. So no one's worried about it in the locker room. I'll tell you that. By the way, the Jazz, uh, are, his wife is a huge um, like blogger. Yeah. You know, or, or Instagram she like, is, yeah. influencer. I gotta so get connected. She's a with fun her. follow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, she is a fun follow. Yeah, I'm sure you will uh, eventually. All right. Um, real quick before we go to break here, Jazz. 
uh, got, you could play, play quick Clippers twice in the next three games. Uh, but the you, Suns just beat the Clippers. I don't know what's going on here. Our in the schedule. What, what are you making? Clippers this? twice. Then what do we so play? You the play Bucks, the Kings twice. The you Bucks, already played them once. Yeah. The next five games are going to be brutal. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a huge test for the Jazz. Clippers, man. We'll find out tomorrow. That's going to yeah. be fun. I cannot wait for that. Well, we know they're beatable because the Suns beat them. Well, they definitely. Uh, everyone's beatable. Yeah, that's you know a good that. point. Everyone's Nobody beatable. goes undefeated. But in how the NBA. about playing Kawhi would be is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun, and he'll be here tomorrow night, folks. Tomorrow it's a later night. game, by the way. It's an 8 p.m. Uh, tip off. All right, we're going to wrap things up. On the other side, Chris and Kenny, jazz reporter, join us here on Talking Jazz.